What's up, everybody? It's man right here, the one, the only, that beautiful Rhode Island Red Rooster. And as always, bring you the knowledge and dropping science in this industry or what we call trucking, okay? Um, what I want to deal with is stuff, uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about the, um, you know, lease, pro, um, lease programs and stuff, you know, they have zero money down, you know, they have trucks with zero money down, lease purchase programs and stuff, uh, those sort of things there. Uh, the pros and cons of it and you know what you could take advantage of and stuff you know to move to the next level all right <clears throat> um you know some carriers and stuff that you go to they got you know lease programs and stuff where you can go in they don't want no money down and stuff you just sign the contract uh fulfill the terms of the truck and stuff and then you either turn it in some of them uh have a buyout pro uh buyout program and stuff where you know you have at the end of the lease and stuff, they'll sell you the truck because by law, they have to do that um, by any lease. Uh, they'll say they have to finance. They just say they have, they have to give you the, um, the first crack of buying the truck at fair market value. Um, some lease programs and stuff do that. And then some lease programs and stuff, uh, uh, they lease you the truck. And then after the lease is finished, you either give them a dollar or they, they just give you the title and stuff, you know. Uh, those type of type, um, those type of uh, lease programs there and stuff. Now, um, the catch to that, <clears throat> the catch to that, uh, a lot of those programs and stuff that are in house, is that they mainly control. They mainly, you know, they have control over the loads and stuff like that. You know, you don't have a choice as to uh, what kind of loads and stuff you want to run or what kind of lanes you want to run. It's, it's basically. What kind of you know what loads they have available at the time they they um you know at the time they send it to you and stuff and then it's simply yes I'm gonna take the load no I'm not gonna take the load and stuff and that's that so you don't have very many options as you know you don't have very many options and stuff you know it's it's simply yes or no you know um, loads picking up here is going there and stuff but you don't have no control over the lane now um. You know, that's how usually most that's how usually those leases and stuff are and everything. You know, you hear the term uh, glorified truck, uh, glorified company driver, uh, those sort of things, there and stuff, right? But again, you know, you take you take that and use that to your advantage because see, when you're creating a legacy, when you're creating a legacy, it's it's based upon the fact that you know you're the first person and that your capital is very limited. And because of that and stuff, you know, you got to start from somewhere. And so, you know, any people, any person that tells you, um, <clears throat> you know, when they became a millionaire, a billionaire and stuff, or they have a business established that, you know, um, their options were very limited and stuff because of the capital that was, um, you know, available at the time. So they had to make these decisions here and stuff, which, uh, which we find ourselves uh, in these positions. So um, it's basically learning the ins and outs of stuff uh, of the truck, right? Because you see those type of leases and stuff help you out later on, you know, when you decide to go out here and let's just say um, you decide to go out and get you a truck for yourself, right? And you start making payments and stuff on a monthly basis as opposed to a weekly basis. Um, you'll see that even if uh, someone gives you a chance and stuff at a high interest loan, it will still it, it still won't be nowhere close to what you're paying inside of a lease. So you know you're saving money there and stuff, and then you're able to uh, you know move on into other things and stuff, man, to advance yourself in business. So I mean, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know it, it, it's really no point and stuff in, in people talking about. Uh, you know, they talking about all the cons of it and stuff, and then they, there is no other option for you and stuff, you know, as far as you trying to get capital. You know, if you're going to be a company driver, then, you know, or, or whatever, you're going to have to save your money. And so if this is giving you an opportunity to um, learn the ins and outs of the sit well somewhat of the system and then, you know, make money on top of that in order to, um, you know, move on to the next level and stuff, then I say, man, yeah, go for it. it it's, but, where, where I see a lot of people go wrong and stuff is that they get too comfortable. They get too comfortable and stuff, man, you know, and that that's just not, it's not a program and stuff for you to be comfortable. And what I'm saying is, is that, you know, 
um, you get the truck and stuff like that, and you, you may be making money on a consistent basis. Instead of you saving your money and trying to um, move to the next level, which is to, to get the truck away from, you know, if you like the truck and you're fascinated with it, you want the truck in, trying to find other means and stuff of ownership of the truck other than just staying inside that lease program because you know but instead you know people go and they, they start buying a bunch of stuff you know buying chrome and washing the truck every week and stuff and you know those sort of things then stuff and you know uh, I understand the need and want of doing that and stuff but you know it, it's just not that's just not the time to do it the time you know when you're in that program and you see that you're you're doing things, you're making money consistently, and you, you like the truck that you're driving in. You know you should be moving towards um, trying to get ownership of that truck uh, by other means and stuff. Then being in that contract and stuff itself, because you know in those contracts, um, you know you got to understand with you being a contractor that your contract can be um, your contract can be uh, terminated anytime. You know. Just as you could say, well, you know, hey, listen, um, things ain't working out here, or you don't even have to give a reason. Um, if you read the termination clause of your contract and stuff, it'll state that, you know, they could terminate your contract as well. And um, being that that truck belongs to the company and stuff, you know, or it's it's kind of, you know, it, it's the company itself is not financing the truck per se right but you know they're a, a, a different entity inside of that company that finances that truck and what they're saying is that you know you can't take your equipment anywhere else except there so you know they're saying well um you know either you know either fulfill the obligation of this contract and stuff or find a way of uh, purchasing the truck so you know um <clears throat> you know in those you know, if you ain't no situation there and stuff, like I said, the best thing you do is to save up your money and not get comfortable, you know, not get comfortable and stuff, man. Try to find a way and stuff. If you like that truck and you want that truck specifically, then find some way of, uh, find some way and stuff of, uh, purchasing that truck or getting it away from that, from that current contract. Because again, you know, five years is it, a very long time to be putting, you know, to be investing into something and then not getting nothing out of it and stuff, you know, on account that, uh, you know the contract states that you know and uh every con er, every contract is like that you know doesn't matter what lease company it doesn't matter what company you lease on to and stuff you know that's why they call you a contractor it's because you know they can terminate your contract at any time just as you can say well you know hey and you don't have to give a reason or whatever they don't have to give a reason either so you know understanding this and stuff will give you a better understanding as to what position you need to position yourself in and stuff you know in order to um, get ownership of the equipment so again you know don't get comfortable just because the money is consistent you know because you have a good dispatcher or you know you're running good loads and stuff like that the objective is to uh, get ownership you know get ownership of the truck and stuff or get it to a point to where you know if things don't work out with that carrier if they do terminate your contract, you can um, take your you can take your equipment, go somewhere else and stuff, man, and you know continue working. Whether it be leasing on with another carrier or getting your own authority. But again, you know um, when you're starting out and you're taking these, um, <clears throat> you know you're taking this step here and stuff. Use it for what it is, you know, because understanding your situation is that you know your capital is very limited and stuff, and so you start basically from scratch. And so start from scratch is going to always be tough and hard, but you know. Uh, that's where you pull your, you know, you pull your pennies together, and your pennies become dollars, and your dollars, um, your dollars actually becomes power enough to get you uh, what you need and stuff, man, to move to the next step towards business. Uh, and so uh, I guess I'm gonna do a part two of this and everything. So tune in for part two, and I'll give you more in depth and stuff of uh, zero down lease programs and stuff, man, and how they work.